Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Well, it's a beautiful midwinter day in Canada here. You know, temperatures are got to be a few degrees higher than zero degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, strangely enough, there aren't a lot of people at the park here today. Uh, regardless, it's a great day to do a little bit of radio stuff. And here's something I've been looking forward to doing for a little while. Let me show you what I've got and we'll get into it. So I think it was a couple of years ago now, um, I saw on Mike, K8MRD's channel, uh, Ham Radio Tube, uh, and, and by the way, if you haven't, if you, if for, I can't imagine it, but if you haven't subscribed to Mike's channel, get over there and do it. Mike's a good guy, uh, and he's got some really interesting stuff. He covers a broad array of topics, and uh, he's a fun guy to watch and keep in touch with. So, so why don't you go on over and do that? But having said that, what I'm looking at today, paying particular attention to, and I did do a video last summer which, which involved this product, but I want to take a, a bit deeper dive into it. This is a Comet product, the CGW560. This is what they call an antenna counterpoise wire, as you can see here. What we've got in the package with the CGW560 is this bit right here. Now that, uh, that terminal is designed to go around an SO239 connector. And attached to that terminal are six radial wires. They're five meters each. That's nearly 17 feet long each. And they're designed, you can see on the package, the common, uh, sorry, that Comet actually, you know, has, has got it shown here as, uh, as, as attached to what looks like a balcony railing in an apartment or condo. Um, but you can see what they've done with the radials in the line art. It looks like these, they just got them flopped over each other. Now, of course, that's not ideal. What we're, what we're talking about here, and I'm just going to put this down for a sec. What we're talking about here, it, you know, if you've done any uh, looking at all into HF vertical antennas. So let, let's talk about things like the Hustler. Um, you know, like a five band TV or a six band TV. Um, those are vertical antennas, but they're really only half the antenna. The other half of the antenna is your counterpoise. So if you're installing one of those big antennas, the, the tall antennas for the base, you're not going to be getting uh, much uh, of, of an output, at least not nearly as much as you could potentially be, if you don't lay down a counterpoise. Uh, and, and, and they always talk about a good bed of radials. Well, of course, this intrigues me, this product, from a, uh, a, a portable slash mobile perspective. Of course, there's a lot of guys who are driving to parks to do parks on the air, and they're running from their car, uh, and they're using antennas like ham sticks. So uh, over here, I've actually got my legacy ham sticks. I haven't used these things in years, but I'm going to put them to a little bit of a test. I've got my Rig Expert AA35 analyzer with me. I want to try out the uh, the, the counterpoise kit. Uh, try out with and without. See how that affects the SWR. Now, to aid me in this uh, in this little experiment I'm doing, I have a another comet, and and I'm not. A, and by the way, I, I bought all this stuff. I, I am not a comet fanboy. Um, you know, I've got a I've got a, I did a video number of years ago on uh, the GP9 uh, VHF UHF antenna that I put up on a tower at my home and it's still working very well for me but uh, but I've had some good success with Comet over the years yeah Comet doesn't even know I exist so it's not like the, the, I'm endorsing them so this is uh, this is a magnet mount here it's the CM5M now they sell a couple of variations of this magnet mount one has the PO mount and, and what a PO mount is, if you're unfamiliar with the 
uh, with the terminology. A PO mount is really an SO239. They've also got one which is looks identical, same product, it just has a, an NMO mount for uh, using on the roof of your car with uh, VHF, UHF style antennas, 2 meter, 440, that sort of thing. So I've got that and I'm going to be using it today just to provide uh, a foundation for the, uh, the ham sticks. And I also picked up one of these. So this is the AD35M. And what this is going to do is this is going to screw on to the magnet mount at the SO239 connection because on the bottom of it there is uh, essentially a PL259 and on the top is uh, is the 3H to 20, a 3, 3H by 24 thread that allows the ham stick to be screwed into the top of it. And just going to pull that out of the bag so you can get a little bit better look at it. Make sure the, uh, the gale forced wind doesn't blow my bag away here. Okay, so, so that's really the product we're looking at here. And by the way, the sucker is hefty. This is not a cheap Chinese made piece of garbage. Um, this actually, and, and you know what, I, I, I should correct myself. I don't know where they're made, but it's solid. It's a nice piece of product. Hey, take a look here. It's even got a little screw for a counterpoise. And by the way, don't know if anybody caught my HFJ-350M uh, experiment that I did last summer and posted a video on. This screw is actually half decent, unlike the tiny little wee thing that has disaster written all over it that found on the HFJ350. So, um, so, so that's an interesting feature. Of course, I won't be needing that because my intention is to lay out the, uh, the what is it again? The CGW560 product, um, and, uh, and, and that'll be the counterpoise. But interesting, good product. This is going to adapt the magnet mount to, um, to, to what I'm going to be using it for. And, and of course, that, that magnet mount with the SO239 connection on it, that is perfect for something like the Chameleon Whip, which, uh, you know, the telescopic whip, the adjustable whip, which, uh, which will cover a number of HF bands uh, with a PL259 at its base, so it'll screw right onto this thing without the need for an adapter. So consider this magnet mount as a multi-purpose thing. So there is the, uh, the protective cap has been removed. The protective cap is kind of a nice idea if you want to leave the magnet mount in your car, which I do not recommend at all, of course, because uh, moisture can get in there and cause a problem with the paint on the vehicle or the surface of uh, the uh, whatever they've used to coat the uh, the, the paint. Um, so I, I, I do recommend removing the magnet mount when it's not in use, but they do provide that protective cap. So here you go. This is the SO239 on the magnet mount. Oh, a little bit of a friendly breeze just picked up there. Hang on a sec. Let me just uh, do some equipment reconfiguration. So now I'm just going to take my adapter right here and I uh, just screw it on trying to keep it all in the frame for you and very nice fit I mean the fit and finish is really good on this combination and squeeze it down there you go so there there's there's my uh, my magnet mount ready to receive a ham stick just before I put the magnet mount on the car I want to show you this there's a black ring around the base of it here, just around the uh, outside. And uh, this protects the surface of the car. It's, uh, it's a very nice feature, and uh, th this is a pretty well-made product, this uh, Comet Magnet Mount. Okay, in case you are unfamiliar with ham stick antennas, uh, in many ways, I guess these are the, uh, the heritage favorite for a mobile operation. Now, uh, downside is that they are monoband antennas so if you want to switch bands you actually have to uh, get out and switch your ham stick uh, for uh, from 80 to 20 to 40 whatever the heck you want to operate um, but the way these work is um, there are two sections and and they, they collapse that way and it broken down into two sections for uh, just just for for ease of uh, handling and transport etc so there is uh, a black element right here. This is the base of it, and it's got a coil inside that's been weather sealed. Now, the, the top part is a stinger. Uh, so let's let's take a look, actually, going back to the, uh, the base section. The base section on the bottom has a 3 8 by 24, uh, and that's what's going to screw into uh, my magnet mount with the adapter. Uh, and on the other end, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm losing stuff. There's a bit of a breeze out here today. Uh, this is where the stinger is going to go in. So if you take a look at the stinger, this this really this this metal whip is what it is. It gets called a stinger. It's a much sexier, more uh, you know marketing savvy type name. Uh, it just terminates uh, into a little a little tip like that. Uh, but the idea is that you use the uh, the, the uh, Allen key that I just dropped and have now picked up, thank goodness, found it in the snow. Um, there are two set screws here. So what you do is you put the, uh, you put the, th the antenna together, uh, you test it for SWR, and then you adjust it and tighten it down for whatever length is appropriate for the end of the band that you want to be working on. Now this particular ham stick that I'm holding in my hand is for 10 meters. So I'm going to want it down towards, you know, the 28.400 range because in my experience, that 28.300 uh, to 28.500 the are, are best for SSB ops. Okay, here is a look at the ham stick uh, attached to the adapter to the magnet mount, uh, and uh, and I've I've just gone in with I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm flying blind right now. I don't know what the SWR is going to be, so. Uh, again, the, the whole point of this exercise is I want to check out what the SWR is going to be like with and without the counterpoise kit. So let's take a look at the uh, at, at this installation. Okay, it's been a while since I've messed around with ham sticks, but I am not getting this antenna to be resonant anywhere near even the top end. Of, uh, of 10 meters right now. You can see it's a uh, minimum 1.3 at uh, 31 uh, megahertz, almost 32 <laughs> megahertz. So I'm not sure what's going on here, uh, but I'm going to try adding the counterpoise just to see what kind of results I get. Hey, I, I'm here and I'm set up anyway. Well, I wanted to put that to the test. I wonder if that has any impact on this. Now let's find out. Okay, well, let me just adjust the frame a little bit. There is a look at the counterpoise now attached. It's attached uh, right where the adapter uh, threads onto the SO239 on the magnet mount. And uh, it's a tight fit in there. And uh, now I've got my, uh, my counterpoise radials ready to be distributed. I'm going to try to distribute them in a uh, circular, somewhat circular uh, formation around the antenna. Okay, switching to, uh, taking a look from back out, uh, there is, uh, and the snow actually helps a little bit with visibility of seeing where the counterpoise are. Uh, you're going to see the, the, the coax cable just sort of hanging down now. Uh, I'm going to be using that in just a moment with the analyzer. So I do have one counterpoise coming, just hanging off the side of the car and then coming out a little bit. One coming off the back edge of the car. Uh, the third one coming out towards the front here, and if we walk around to the other side, oh, I see my, <laughs> my, my ammo box. I forgot to close it. A gust came up, blew it on the ground. Contents are everywhere. Ah, the hazards of living in the Great White North. Okay, I better pick that stuff up before I lose some of it. But here are the remainder of the, uh, the counterpoises. One coming off the front, uh, one off the center, one off the back. Ah, now I'm interested to see what will happen uh, with that analyzer. Well, this is interesting. I've just put the 10 meter ham stick back on. And you may recall that when I initially tested it without the counterpoise kit, I was getting uh, a minimum SWR up around 32 megahertz. Uh, and now it is just above 30. So this is this is very interesting. The adding the counterpoise brought the resonant point down a fair bit uh, and probably bringing the antenna uh, down to a point where it's usable with a, a wide ranging tuner on 10. Uh, very interesting stuff. I've just set up my 40 meter ham stick and look what I'm getting here. So I shortened the stinger pretty much as far as it'll go. Um, 7505. Holy mackerel. <laughs> That's way high too. I'm beginning to wonder about the roof of this Subaru Outback 
and maybe there's something at play here. But uh, nonetheless, I came out here to test the counterpoise, so let's take a look at what happens when I throw the counterpoise on. Here's what the SWR curve looks like on 40 meters with the counterpoise kit attached. So there you have it, just a, just a quick video. Hopefully it's going to be quick by the time I get finished editing it. Just testing around, playing with it. No, no on the air stuff, but just figuring out, okay, what kind of uh, information can I glean from this? Number one, I gleaned, you know, what I knew all along was that a counterpoise has to be able to help a vertical antenna that doesn't have a good bed of ground radials. Uh, you know, and I need to do some more fiddling with my hamsticks to bring them down and figure out what I'm doing wrong to uh, bring them into resonance uh, in their respective bands. One is brand new, one's 20 plus years old. So I don't know what's going on with, uh, with that, that, high, uh, that, that high resonant uh, frequency business. But anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you got something out of this. Hey, if you've done any experimenting with, um, with, with hamsticks and this sort of thing, would you please leave a comment below and let myself and anybody else that happens to read the comment uh, a little bit about what you found. Hints and tips are always appreciated. We're a community here and, uh, and, and we love to share information. That's it for this time. Hey listen, there's a, there's a super tips uh, thanks button down below. If you like what I do and you want to send me a couple bucks for a coffee, I'd sure appreciate it, especially on a day like today. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3TWM.